Hello, <clears throat> my name is Greg Stone, and I co-led an expedition to Antarctica about 20 years ago to study the effects of climate change. During that year, the largest iceberg in history broke off from the Ross Ice Shelf, which is just south of New Zealand and Australia. It was a chunk of ice about the size of Rhode Island. Um, with enough fresh water in it to supply the United States for uh, five years, uh, including all of its agricultural needs, which gives you an idea of how much ice is down there and how much water is there. And, and that's, in fact, where most of the uh, fresh water on the planet is stored. It was a uh, very challenging expedition. It took us three months. We did it with the uh, National Geographic Society. And uh, we did a book and a magazine story, and, and Wes, my dear friend Wes Skiles, uh, wonderful, just the great Wes Skiles diver. He, he unfortunately died in a diving accident about eight years ago. And his uh, widow, Terry, sent me all the tapes from the expedition from which Wes had made about a 45-minute documentary, but it turned out there was about 75 tapes. And uh, so I started looking through them, and then suddenly there was this resurgence and in interest in this, this documentary from 20 years ago. Just the last couple of months, I've been getting hundreds of emails a day from people who saw the documentary and want to know more about it. Now, of course, when you have 75 te tapes of material and you only use 45 minutes of it, there's a lot of material that hasn't been used. So. Uh, People have been asking me for more images and more <laughs> of the details from the expedition. So I've been going through these tapes, and I'm starting to pull out some of the shots that were never used and share them with you. And this is the uh, this is one of them, the second one. And these are not uh, professionally uh, cut or edited. That's uh, me and Porter Turnbull. Uh, diving into the pack ice down in the Ross Sea to investigate the the animals uh, underwater. Very cold water there. You know, did you know seawater freezes below the temperature of fresh water because of the effect of the ice in the water? It's called the colligative properties. But anyway, we had these amazing dives underwater. Here's one where we, we discovered these holes in the ice. Fish hiding out inside. Now, I'm going to leave you here with this uh, temperature map of the Earth over the last 500 million years or so, which is really the crux of the story. Um, I'll run it again here in a minute, but uh, I want you to think about how this worked. The uh, Everybody knows about the Jurassic, which is the last, or one of the last really hot areas of the planet where the weather was like the Bahamas everywhere, and ever since then the planet's been uh, cooling off a bit, and it's starting to heat up again, but really fast, and we're heading back towards Jurassic-like temperatures. The only issue now is that the temperatures are rising about five or 6,000 times faster than they did during the original uh, Jurassic uh, heating of the planet. and. For those of you that say that climate change is normal, it happens all the time, it's how evolution uh, is stimulated and works, well, it's true, but it never happens this fast, uh, at least in the time that we humans have been on the planet. So the problem today is not the change, but it's the rate of change. And it's a rate of change that's very uncomfortable for us humans. And if we don't do something immediately to slow down this uh, what's called a runaway climate heating scenario. Uh, life is going to be very uncomfortable for a lot of people um, on the planet. So that's the end of this sequence. I'll put up a few more of these to let you a little bit uh, into the background of this expedition. And thank you for your interest. Take care. Bye.